Well, scientists have unveiled the first image of the supermassive black hole that sits at the center of our own Milky Way galaxy. Called Sagittarius A, the black hole is a biggie. It's about four million times larger than the sun. Let's get the scientific lowdown from Professor Roger Dean. He's the director and professor of astrophysics at Wits University Center of Astrophysics. Thanks for your time, Prof. Appreciate it. So for all of those still in the dark about a black hole, what exactly is it? Can you simply explain it for us? No, a black hole. Well, good evening, and thanks very much for having me. Um, black holes have captured humanity's interest for uh, as long uh, since they were first conceptualized over 100 years ago. Um, and in, in essence, they are these very strange regions of, of space where matter has been scrunched into such a small space that actually it's curving space-time itself. So it's a region where um, you cross a boundary and it's almost like you disappear from this universe because there's nothing that can come back. Um, not even light can escape this region, uh, a region called the black hole. So there's, there's no chance, it's such a, a, a child's question, there's no chance of us being swallowed in this big black hole, right? Well, no one's come back yet and told any tales, so at this point <laughs> we're in the dark. Yeah, I'm guessing you wouldn't be able to come back from it. So this is a second black hole to be photographed. Uh, what can we learn from the images? Yes, yeah, so you might remember in 2019, we released, we released the first image of a black hole. That was, um, that was a real beast, about six and a half billion times the mass of the sun, packed into about the size of the solar system. And that was in a galaxy about 55 million light years away. What we announced yesterday was actually not as a beast. It, on the opposite end of the spectrum, the mass spectrum, so a, a far more normal galaxy, uh, a black hole, and that's because we live in a far more normal um, galaxy. So it's about a thousand times lower in mass than the black hole that we imaged back in 2019, but by coincidence, it's about the same size on the sky. And what one of the key things that this teaches us is that because it is very, very similar and about the, pretty much exactly the size that we expect. We've now tested Einstein's general theory of relativity for the really, really big beast back in 2019 and a black hole that is a thousand times less massive. And Einstein's theory holds up. The size is exactly as would be expected with his theory. So you're one of only two African-based scientists forming part of the Event Horizon Telescope collaboration responsible for the creation of this image that we actually have on screen. So tell us about the project and how such a massive collaboration works. How difficult is it to actually take a photo from 27,000 light years away? It takes an incredible coordinated global effort and um, this was challenging pre-pandemic and it really became a challenge as, as everything did uh, once the pandemic hit. But in essence, we've got a team of over 300 scientists spread across 80 institutes on four continents and the telescopes that are used are spread across the earth. So we really need the extremes of the earth because we need to put these antennas as far away as possible. Um, so we, we, we essentially uh, synthesize an Earth-sized telescope by using this network of different antennas on, uh, in, in fairly extreme places, including the South Pole. So you need people there, you need uh, people looking after those antennas, but also you, it's a global effort because we have everything from software engineers to um, mechanical engineers building these telescopes to the astronomers, the physicists, um, so, uh, AI experts working on this uh, in a coordinated fashion to achieve this extraordinary technical feat. So it's a, it's a wonderful um, uh, scientific result in, in validating Einstein's general theory of relativity, but it's also an extraordinary engineering effort um, that, that, is, that, is, that has been required to, to do this. What are your hopes for increased South African participation in research of this kind? Yes, so as you mentioned, there are only two of us that are Involved, that are based on African soil that have been involved in this. Uh, myself and Vitz postdoctoral fellow, uh, Dr. Inia Nasarayan, um, who did some extraordinary work for this, for this, uh, this particular result. So um, 
there are several ways we can do this. We have a lot of expertise in radio astronomy and in astronomy more generally um, as parts of the square kilometer array developments in the Karoo and other strategic projects. And we're, we're able, the reason myself and Dr. Nutterine are involved in this project is we leverage the kinds of expertise that were acquired for, on route towards the square kilometer array. And I think this is one opportunity where we're able to leverage that and, and get involved in a really cutting edge uh, niche experiment that's doing something fantastic from a scientific and engineering perspective. Now, specifically what we, our, our concept is we're, we're, we're working on a, um, an idea to host a, a more low cost, smaller antenna, um, but in a good infrastructure site, we, we have several well-established astronomical sites around the country. And um, we're building a case for, for, for adding one of these global nodes uh, within uh, on, on South African soil. And I think that would be a key step change moment where we then would be able to involve a lot more young South African students, young postdocs, and really be a part of this new era of black hole imaging and precision general relativity tests through this technique that the Event Horizon te Telescope has pioneered. I'm going to ask our team to bring that image back up because I'm supposed to be looking at a black hole, but I see this orange in that photograph. What exactly are we seeing here? So you weren't expecting orange? <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. So um, the black hole isn't, in fact, orange. We've, we've, it's, that is a single uh, intensity um, that, is, that is shown there. That is to say, um, we, we're not, we haven't measured the color yet, but we've, we've painted that on artistic license, I suppose. But what you're seeing there is a ring-like structure. Um, we're not imaging anything coming out of the black hole. We're imaging very energetic, hot, hot gas that is shining uh, uh, and um, uh, generating light, sending it towards Earth in the immediate vicinity of the black hole. So there's gas that's swirling, and just before it, 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 it disappears into the black hole and beyond that event horizon, that boundary layer where it kind of ex exits our universe almost, um, we're seeing the, the gas just at that moment. And some of that gas is so close that the, the, the black hole is actually deflecting the light paths. It actually bends around the black hole, and some of it so much so that it, it orbits around the black hole. So the, so the combination of having this deflection of light and then some of the light disappearing into the black hole results in a ring-like structure, and that's what you're seeing there. A, this ring-like structure in a deficit of light towards the center, that was the telltale sign signal that was predicted uh, 22 years ago. Um, even further back, but in detail for this specific black hole, the center of our galaxy, 22 years ago. And that is what we released yesterday uh, with the Event Horizon Telescope results. Oh, all right. Thank you so much for explaining that. I appreciate your time. Roger Dean, Director and Professor of Astrophysics at Blitz University Center for Astrophysics.